Hello and welcome to Void Electronics. If you're into audio amplifier design, I think this video is for you. And that's because I got a really interesting question from somebody and I want to answer it uh, using a dedicated video. And here it is. So the question was how to calculate the power supply voltage for an audio amplifier. Let's say it's a class AB amplifier knowing the power that we want to get and the impedance of the speaker. So in this video I want to demonstrate how to use the fundamental formulas that we probably know from school, university or whatever in order to, to get the answer to this question. So you probably know two basic formulas that uh, help us in, in this case. The first one being um, the power with respect to voltage and current. So the electrical power is the product between voltage and current. So far this is really basic. And then another formula that helps in this case is obviously Ohm's law. So Ohm's law states that the voltage is the product of current and resistance. However, what we want to get here is voltage with respect to power and resistance because that's the initial question. So, of course, you can find the formula for this on the internet, but let's see how to derive it, assuming that we don't know it and we only know these two. Well, to get voltage with respect to power and resistance, we have to transform the second formula, the Ohm's law formula, just a bit using the first formula. So what we can do is we can um, substitute the current here with something else. Let's see how we can substitute the current here. Well, we can get it from the first formula, which is the power formula and the current equals power divided by voltage. Let's get this and substitute it in the second formula. Then we get voltage equals power divided by voltage times the resistance. And now we don't really like it because we have the voltage on both sides, which is not nice. So how can we get rid of this? Well, we can multiply by the voltage. Let's do that. So now we get V squared equals P times R. This is not nice once again because we want the voltage, not the square of the voltage. So what we can do is we can apply the square root on both sides and we get voltage equals the square root of the product between power and resistance. So of course this is a ready-made formula that you can find on the internet, but this is how you get to that formula. Now this helps up to a certain point, let's say. This is not really the final answer to this question. And that's because we are not working with a DC circuit here. We are working with an AC circuit that complicates things just a bit. First of all, we have to, to see how, um, how voltage translates into power and loudness, basically. So whenever we, we talk about amplifiers, we talk about average power or RMS power, which is strictly related to the loudness of an audio system. So the loudness is proportional to the RMS power, not the peak power. However, when we do the math for something like this, we are really interested in the peak power. So we have to calculate the peak power based on the RMS power that is usually um, specified in the amplifiers manual. And to do this, we have to use another formula that maybe many of us know, and that is the formula for peak voltage based on RMS voltage. And let's see if we can apply it the same way for the power or not. Well, you probably know that the peak voltage is equal to the RMS voltage multiplied by the square root of two. Now, this is really important. Um, it's really important to say here that this only works for sine waves. So we assume that we have a sinusoidal signal when we do this. Okay, so how can we get the P 
peak power from this? Is it the RMS power multiplied by the square root of 2? Well, not really. Let's see why. Well, once again, by playing with these two formulas, you can get power with respect to voltage and resistance, and it is voltage squared divided by resistance. So, peak power would be the voltage RMS, RMS voltage multiplied by the square root of 2, because this gives us the peak voltage, right? However, this needs to be squared and divided by R. And let's see what we get now. Well, peak power equals V RMS squared times 2 divided by R, right? Okay, now if we look at this, we can notice something interesting. This right here is actually the RMS power. We can call it P RMS. So basically, this means that peak power is double the RMS power for sine wave signals. Once again, you can find this formula online, but I'm showing you how to derive it in case you, you don't know where it comes from. So this is where it comes from. Okay, so now um, to get the answer to our initial question, we simply have to express the peak voltage based on RMS power. So we need to go back to this formula, voltage, let's say this is the peak voltage, equals our power expressed based on the RMS power, so it's 2 times the RMS power, like so, and we multiply that by, this is not a resistance really, but this is the impedance of the speaker, so let's call it ZL, and we take the square root of this. Now let's do a practical example and see how this applies to an amplifier. Well, we care about this number because whenever we have a class B amplifier like this one, the output swings between the positive supply and the negative supply, right? So, assuming that the top transistor is fully on, the output can get as high as plus VCC right here, which is the positive supply, assuming that the transistor acts like a short. And similarly, the output can go as low as minus VCC, assuming that the bottom transistor is uh, short. Now, in practice, there are many reasons why these transistors are never that short. So, what we calculate right here is basically the theoretical uh, minimum assuming ideal transistors or something like this. So, for an amplifier that works without distortion, and for an amplifier that works with real transistors instead of ideal transistors, you have to have some margin. So this gives you the minimum. This is really important here. Okay, so with this in mind, of course, this video wouldn't be complete without a practical example. Let's see how a practical example would look like. Well, let's assume that we have an amplifier um, that is supposed to provide 75 watts into a speaker that is 8 ohms, an 8 ohm speaker. Let's do the math for this. V peak would be, let's see. Well, first of all, we take the RMS power. I forgot to mention that this is RMS. And we take the RMS power and double it. So we have um, 150 and then we have to multiply this by the impedance of the speaker, which is 8 ohms in this case. And then we take the square root of that and we get around 34.64 volts. Let's see how this applies to our amplifier right here. Well, 
Remember that um, the output swings both positive and negative, which means that um, this is just half of the supply voltage or the, the voltage between one of the supplies and ground basically. So in our case, plus VCC needs to be, let's say 35 volts and minus VCC needs to be negative 35 volts in order for this amplifier to provide this power of 75 watts RMS. Once again, this is just an approximation for the theoretical minimum, assuming that we have a sinusoidal signal through the amplifier. Now, it just so happens that I do have a 75 watt amplifier. What a strange coincidence, right? Let's see what the actual value for the power supply voltage is. So, what I'm doing here is I'm measuring the voltage across the main power capacitor, which means that um, this is basically the voltage that we've just calculated. So it should be above 35 volts, right? Let's see. Let's power it up. Three, two, one. And we get around 50 volts. Okay, so as you can see in practice the voltage is higher and that's because the designers allowed for some margin there to account for the voltage drop across the power transistors and to make sure that they get a clean output without distortion because this is a really low distortion amplifier. This is a Sansui G5700 by the way. So yeah, I hope you liked this video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. That's it for now. Bye.